Hello? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay? All right. Yeah, I can hear you now. Perfect, perfect. How are you today? I'm doing well, brother, as well as we can be right now. But how are you, man? Man, just, uh, you know, uh, just hanging in there. Um, you know, still making sure I'm pumping out, you know, um, as much content as I can to help people out. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that, man. You've been kicking butt with that content, dude. I'm loving it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, this is actually the first time we're uh, talking person to person. Well, I guess over the podcast, but it's yeah, the first yeah. time we're having a live conversation, correct? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Um, it's crazy because uh, I, I feel like a lot of the uh, the boxing coaches on Instagram have actually never met each other, but we feel like we, we've known each other just because we follow each other pretty yeah, hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool, dude, in my opinion, because, you know, like... Granted, uh, me and you are semi-local. I think we're about 45 minutes to an hour drive away from each other. Yeah, so um, you're in Chino or yes, Rancho? Chino. I'm, I'm a little bit confused about your look because I think I've seen a couple different posts from different places. Yeah, so I, I train all over the place and I post all over the place, but I actually I live in Chino. Chino. Okay, got it. Chino Hills. Yeah, Chino, Chino Hills, yeah. Got it. And um, so the gym that you shoot the tutorials out of, is that your own personal gym? Uh, no. So how that came to be is that, uh, my girlfriend actually had a trainer at the time who, um, who then she put an award for me saying like, Hey, you should check out my boyfriend. He does boxing, et cetera, et cetera. So they already had a facility, um, open, but it was more geared towards weightlifting. So then I started coming in on Saturdays, we would move some stuff around and I would do basic, uh, footwork drills, basic, uh, technique work, and then a little bit of mitts. Um, and I did that for about three months with him and he started bringing in his kids and, uh, his idea had always been to expand into something bigger. So, uh, once he started seeing like how his kids were enjoying it, how one of his, uh, other, uh, um, clients would come in and do the classes with me as well. He was like, Hey, I've always wanted to expand into another facility, do something more geared, uh, for group training. But uh, I've been thinking, what if we rent out another suite here and we make a small boxing studio? And that's how Uppercut Boxing came to be. Oh, wow. OK, so so if I'm getting the story straight, so, so your girlfriend had a trainer at the time and mm-hmm. he's, he's, a, he's a weightlifting trainer, correct? Yes. Got it. OK, cool. And then so he's like, oh, you sh- you sh- uh, she said she put in the work for you. Check out my boyfriend. He does boxing. So you started running some classes a couple times a week and then he started liking what you did. So he actually ex- got another suite in the same building and uh-huh. then expanded into uppercut boxing which is basically a spinoff of the original gym yes pretty much god okay that's, that's super mm-hmm. cool so but so but uppercut boxing is your it's your operation even though you're under the under other gym as well too correct uh, yeah, so Uppercut Boxing is the name of the studio, and it runs under El, El Luchador Barbell Club, which is what the uh, weightlifting gym is called. Got it. Um, but my personal brand, I'm sure you know, is Inner Strength Training Systems, and that's my personal brand. Dope, dope. You know, actually, uh, uh, one of the questions I always wanted to personally ask you was, um, <clears throat> so what, what is the uh, – uh, tell me a little bit about the story as to what, what's the meaning and the story behind Inner Strength. Oh, cool, man. Cool. I don't get this uh, question that oh, often. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, I actually, always love I, hearing people's, um, like, where the name came from, unless it's yeah, like the actual old name. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, <clears throat> so I had been playing around with a couple of different names, um, uh, all kind of uh, based around, um, uh, you know, being, being strong and, like, having to endure uh, everything that happens in life beyond boxing, beyond the physical side of things, you know? Yes. Uh, so I played around with a, di- a couple of different names. One of the names actually was uh, Vigor Fitness and Boxing. What was it? And uh, Vigor, V-I-G-O-R. Got it, got it. And um, that name, I really liked it. I mean, it just sounds pretty badass, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, but unfortunately, it was already there was already a few gyms that came, were uh, taken up with that name. So then I kept uh, word vomiting. You know, I was like, oh, this sounds cool. This doesn't. Uh. Um, then I had another name was like Synergized um, Training Systems. And that one was like a little too weak. Um, <clears throat> and then I was thinking, like, just what about inner strength? You know, what about inner strength? And then I kind of sat with that for, for about a couple of days. 
And like, um, finally I decided to stick with it. And the reason why I decided to go with inner strength was because my belief is that, um, no matter what you decide to do in life, we, we all have a, a, you know, strength in us that we don't really normally tap into yes. unless we, um, we are forced to in under circumstances or we have uh, somewhat of a guide to, to help us get there, you know? So uh, that's always been my idea behind inner strength training systems to help everybody reach that inner strength that I know is deep inside all of us and help you conquer whatever it is you're trying to conquer in your life. You know, that, that's actually, that, that is absolutely what's up. So, to kind of make the, the give some life to the name of, of your training system, um, what's one time that you really felt like you had to like really dig for that inner strength? And it doesn't have to be boxing related. Um, so this past uh, November of 2019, yes, uh, the week of Thanksgiving, um, my mom uh woke me up at around eleven thirty, um saying that she couldn't breathe. Um oh my God. she felt like irregular heart palpitations and then uh uh her her eyes looked really beady and just nothing looked she didn't look right, you know. <clears throat> so then I, I try to go and sit with her. I'm trying to talk to her. It's like do you want to go to the ER? Do you want to go to the ER? And um uh, finally we decided to go to the ER and um it ended up being that she had uh, developed what's called AFib, which means that your um, your heart rate is fluctuating at all times. So it can go from like 120 uh, rates per minute to 175 within a second or two, you know? Got it. And um, <clears throat> this caused the shortness of breath because obviously when the heart's not working correctly, it stops pumping blood correctly. So now she either has too little blood pumping through her body or too much, which in her case was ended up being too much. And um, it actually made some of the blood and fluids go back to her lungs. So that's why she couldn't really breathe. Oh, man. Um, yeah, she was in the hospital for about uh, five days or so. Wow. And uh, yeah, man, that, that was like... The first time I ever had um, somebody that close to me be in any sort of like health issues. Got it. Um, and then obviously like having to uh, relay the news to the rest of the family, you know, having to come back home and still take care of my, my father, still, you know, keep up the house. So that way when she came back, everything was still, you know, like somewhat okay. Because <laughs> um, you know yeah. when, the, the, when the mom's not the, the one. When yeah, the exactly. Kind of goes, to, goes to shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, dude. Exactly. So then, um, that was one of the times that I would say for sure, especially considering that even after she did come back, up until this day, she still has to like take it somewhat easy. And uh, I've just been. No, I don't want to say picking up the slack, but I've just been, you know, doing doing more around the house than I yes. would normally. You know. Well, uh, number one, uh, that. You know, man, I'm, well, I'm glad that she's doing better. Um, you yeah. know, I think a lot of times uh, we, we always say we're, we're going to be able to deal with it and we'll be strong when that moment comes. But, you know, we just, we're human. And uh, I, I feel like, you know, all of us goes into that fight or flight mode and just yeah. starts to panic. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And it was kind of interesting just because um, – I, I guess I didn't have uh, time to uh, process what had happened. Yeah. So finally, when she, it wasn't until she came back home uh, after a week or so that I like just a wave of emotion hit me, bro. It was, it was kind of interesting. Just like, you know, like I, I felt really emotional. I cried and, and you know, cause up until that point I had to kind of, keep my shit together, you know? Right, right, right. But when, when I when I think, you know, like my body without me subconsciously knowing just said like, okay, everything's fine now. It's your turn, you know? So, uh, yeah, it, it was a very emotional day when, for me at least, when she came back, everybody else was more relieved. But I think that was like, finally, when, when I was able to process everything that had happened, you know? Yeah, for sure, brother. Um, uh, are, are you, uh, I, I don't know why I'm starting to think this. I don't know if it's because I'm an only child. Are, are you an only son or an only child? No, no, no. Okay. I'm, uh, yeah, we have, uh, I have three siblings. I have an older sister, an older brother, uh, and a younger brother. But I am currently the only one living at home. Got it, so, got it. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, uh, I'm, I'm glad your mom's doing better. I'm, uh, I'm yeah, glad yeah. that, uh, you know, you're, you're back to full force as well, too. 
Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. We're, we're, and we're with well. that being said, uh, I, I was always a little bit curious as to your uh, boxing story, Coach, mm-hmm. if you can kind of share that with us. Yeah, for sure. So um, I've always had an interest in, in, in boxing and um, – I don't want to say martial arts because what sparked that uh, that little fire was definitely boxing. Got it. Um, I remember one day I just uh, I was working out at Crunch. Now I've always had like a uh, a niche for fitness. Uh, back back in the day, it was always um, weightlifting. Okay. Uh, especially after high school, because in high school I played all sorts of sports. And um, you have a football background. Yes, football. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Cool. So, so yes. a lot, a lot of like chest press, squats, deadlift. Power. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, after that, um, I met a trainer. That was the first trainer I've ever had, and um, he um, kind of gave me some tips and, as to how to get started. Granted, this was back before the fitness industry, let alone the boxing fitness industry was so uh, hot. Getting started as, it is now. as in like how to train yourself or to start as a trainer to get paid? To start, uh, to start as a trainer for me, yeah, yeah. because when I, when I told him like, granted, I lost a huge amount of weight with him. I gained a lot of strength. That's right. Um, so after that, I was when I told him like, hey, man, like I don't really, you know, I didn't go to college or anything like that, you know, so I told him like, man, like. I feel like I could be good at this, you know, like any tips on how to get started. And he's, he told me a couple different uh, certifications that I could look at, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so as I was pursuing that, I was like, always, I would always hit the bag at the gym and I always try to like, at that time it was granted more for cardio, you know? Yes. But um, then I met a friend who invited me down to Chino Boxing Club. And uh, that's when I kind of like started learning more of the, um, sports side of, of actual boxing rather than just hitting the bag to tire you out, you know? Got it. Um, so were you, so, so by this time, were you, were you already boxing? Um, no, I had just, that was, you know, it was beginner, beginning stuff, God, man. Okay. I had, I had been doing a lot of self-taught stuff, but um, granted, like the technique, uh, I didn't understand it as well as I do now. Got it. Um, and um I've always, I noticed that I've always had a, a niche for teaching, which kind of uh, made it easier for me to understand the the technique that goes behind the sport, especially because I had such an interest in it already, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just feel like, um, you know, uh, boxing is, is a very complicated sport, um, but, you know, to, to be able to do it yourself and to teach it, it is two completely different things. Oh, for sure. For sure, man. For sure. And, and you yeah. know, I mean, I I teach at a gym where, you know, like almost everybody, every other coach in the in the ring is a world champion or has trained the world champion. You, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. I, I you know I, I see a lot of people, but just in general. But you know the the whole I'm a pro thing and you know being a teacher thing is in doesn't always always equate from what I can see just all around. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so uh, the first boxing certification I ever got was through Box and Burn, and I'll get a little more into that a little later. But um, one of the things that always stuck with me that uh, Tony Jeffrey said was that you don't have to be a uh, fighter to be a coach, and you don't have to be um, a coach to be a fighter, you know, which pretty much – what he was trying to say is that, you know, not every fighter is going to make a good coach and not every coach is going to make a good fighter. Yes. Know? So um, that definitely stuck with me throughout the years of, of uh, learning. And um, I want to say about six months into me uh, getting into uh, actual boxing sport, you know, moving around, sparring, etc., I found the Box and Burn certification. And um, <clears throat> granted, at that time, it was uh, just mainly for uh, basic mate work. Yep. Um, so um, I, I went ahead and did that uh, level one certification. And uh, that's what kind of got me started more on um, gearing my business, my training business towards uh, boxing, boxing fitness. Okay. And which later on uh, developed into actually teaching fighters now. Yeah, no, um, I would that you know, uh, that was gonna be my next question. Uh, but before I go there, um, do you feel like if it wasn't for the boxing burn, um, 
academy with Tony Jeffries, uh, do you think you still would have gotten to this place? E- mm, that's a good question. Um, or do you feel like it was necessary? I don't think it was necessary, okay. uh, to be honest with you. Um, however, I think it gave me a little bit of confidence. Okay. Like being being able to like see that um, like see that certificate, you know, and 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 have like the boxing bird name kind of backing my 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 reputation, you know. Um, at that time, it, it helped me, um, but also um, not not to talk bad on on the program they run over there. It's it's super amazing. Now that I want to start um, focusing with uh, training fighters more. Um, there has been a little bit of hesitation from, from people just because like, oh, this is a fitness gym. This is a boxing fitness gym. I'm like, you don't understand though. Like these people know exactly what the hell they're talking about. Like they can get fighters ready. It's just that we gear it more towards the everyday person, you know? Right. I get it. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely get it. Um, I, I just feel yeah. like, uh, you know, um, just in general, I feel like the boxing fitness industry has kind of gotten a bad rap because, yeah, you know, like boxing has gotten so popular that, you know, um, now every coach is a boxing coach. Um, every trainer is holding mitts. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, there was this one time that uh, I was in the gym and, a bo- you know, uh, a boxing trainer had told me that, oh, like, you can't you can't pretend to know boxing, but we can pretend to lift weights. And I was like, I didn't really say anything back to this coach, but I was like, no, it's not, you can't say that because each you know lifting and boxing, they're they're both they each of them are completely an art in itself, right? Yeah, so sure. a, a, a boxer, you know a boxing coach couldn't pretend to know he knows the exact details of lifting. Right. Yeah. I mean, they could, but I'm just saying if, if they only knew one, they couldn't quite pretend to do the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I agree. So I, I think that kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit because, you know, it, it, lifting is such an incredible art. Boxing is such an incredible art. I just feel like sometimes just when it comes to coaching, people tend to kind of like, you know, shit on other disciplines. Oh, for sure, for sure. And um, I, I noticed that uh, I noticed that the most um, in the boxing community, mainly. Um, you know, um, not not to say like people are territorial, but uh, they definitely like protect their craft. They protect their their gym. They protect their team. You know, and I've noticed that right. quite a bit in the boxing world. Which I mean, it, I understand it. You know. Personally, I don't operate like that. I, I, I like to operate as far as, like, you know, I'm open about what I do. I don't have nothing to hide. You know, I don't like being territorial. It's, like, more of a network because I feel like at the end of the day, we're all in the same race, you know? And we're all of trying course. we're all trying to get um, – to uh, expose boxing again, you know, to, to get those glory days back in the 90s, you know, when every kid Absolutely. wanted to wanted to box, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, I feel like we should all just be one tribe and just try to grow the sport together. You know what I mean? Um, exactly. Um, yeah. So, uh, cool. So, so we've kind of gone over your origin story. Uh, we've kind of gone over, we've gone over, you know, the meaning of inner strength. Um, now, when it comes to uh, training, uh, what percentage of the people that you train are fighters and what percentage are uh, fit, like your everyday fitness clients? Um, so most of my, my clientele are everyday fitness people. Um, it wasn't until the last, uh, I want to say, uh, six months that I've been, um, marketing myself more towards fighters just because going back to what we said before, I wanted to make sure that my skill level, my understanding of the sport was at a, at a level where I wouldn't be, uh, one, making a fool of myself as a coach and two, which is more important is, you know, um, giving a fighter false um, information or false uh, false confidence to where they got you get in the fight and they get the shit rocked and then, like, you know, that falls on me too, you know? Right. I mean, b- before just even just embarrassment or, you know, like a 
the the emotions of losing more like you know for their actual well being. Yeah, know? exactly. This is just like you don't play boxing. You know, exactly. you can lose a basketball game. You can use you can lose a baseball game, but if you go in a boxing match, you don't know what you're doing. You get severely rocked, and you may never be able to come back from a health condition like exactly. that. That's major, you know? Exactly, man. Exactly. So uh, that was like the, the the biggest point, and it wasn't until I started understanding the sport more started understanding the rules, started understanding the, the many factors that go into, into boxing, you know, like the size of your opponent, the range of your opponent, how your style, how this style is going to fit that style, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Right. And did you, uh, did you have a mentor when it came to uh, fight coaching? Yes, actually, I had about three different ones. Okay. <clears throat> Are they all in the, uh, like, Chino Inland Empire area? Um, they're in Dillon Empire, most of them, but one of them, I actually think you might know him, Mike Amon. Mike Avon. What, what's his, what's his handle? Uh, his handle is J Mike. J Mike? Uh, yeah, he's of, of uh, Asian descent yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, no, he's I know. Uh, he's, area. Out of, uh, he's out of Vino. Vino. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, did, I didn't so, know he does uh, fight coaching. Uh, yeah, man, he's he's been... Um, He's been stepping into it a little bit more. Oh, that's for and uh, yeah. Oh, I so did, with him, I did see a video of you and him putting pads together. Yeah, exactly. That was one of the first times we ever met. Uh, so me and Mike actually met through Instagram, and uh, we noticed that we were somewhat close to each other. We both had a Crunch membership at the time, so we we're like, "Hey, man, let's meet up and hit mitts." And I told him, "Like straight up, dude, I don't know much about mitts other than the basics." So. <laughs> With him, it wasn't so much about fight theory that he taught me. Uh, with him, it was more about um, advancing the levels of mitt, mitt work, Got you know, it. how to do conditioning drills, how to do different sorts of drills to, you know, get a hook better, how to um, uh, do different drills to get your um, to get your range better, how to, you know, just all different sorts on the mitt. So he really, really helped me step on my mid game. Um, another person, uh, was my current boxing coach. His name is coach Lalo out of, um, the self-care lab in Pomona. And, uh, yes, he's yes. the one um, that... I think I started following, I don't know if it was you. Oh no. Okay. I started following, uh, coach Le- uh, Lalo is it Lalo? Yeah. Lalo. 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 Uh, because, uh, um, I know we both know him too. Um, uh, Adam Castro boxing. Um, yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. had sent me. Oh, I, I think I posted something about like you know teaching correct technique and what whatnot, and I think um, uh, Coach Adam had sent me a post from you know Coach Lalo or one of his like partners in crime or whatnot. So I started following him oh. as well too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. So uh, yeah, Adam's freaking awesome. I uh, had the chance of finally meeting him um, early March. Okay. Um, one of uh, my teammates, because I also train Muay Thai and MMA and Vital Force in Chino Hills. Okay. Um, so one of my teammates, he had a fight, and then our head coach, Coach Lee, asked me to help him corner. So um, it was for Epic Fight Night, and uh, that was in San Diego. So I finally got the chance to finally meet um, Adam face to face, which was really cool. I, awesome, I also dude. do remember. Uh, I, I remember. I, I don't know if it was you or Adam uh, had posted that you guys are both uh, back uh, warming up your fighters together. That that was super cool. Oh yeah, man! It was it was really cool. Like uh, I, you know, we weren't. Um, uh, my coach was just taking pictures, and he caught he caught a pretty badass one where it was um, me catching mitts for my fighter, and then him in the background catching mitts for his fighter. It was it was pretty. Yeah, cool that picture, was uh, that was so yeah. cool. Um, you know, uh, funny thing is, um, me, uh, myself, and Coach Adam, uh, I think we started following each other mm-hmm. um, before we actually met. And then um, I was like, uh, one day, I, you know, in Fortune, like, there's always, like, fighters coming in to spar or whatever. And uh, um, I saw a new coach and new fighter. I was like, oh, like, that looks like Joey Beltron. And I looked uh-huh. over and, I, and I, I, did, I did realize that was Joe, Joey Beltron, but I didn't know it was Coach Coach Adam. I didn't know that was his coach at the time. Right. So we missed each other. But ever since then, we've been, you know, super cool buddies on uh, on Instagram. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He was, he was very cool, man. Very awesome. He introduced me to uh, Joey Beltran as well. He was there that night. Yeah, yeah, they were, um, they were super cool, man. Yeah, yeah, very, very cool people, very humble people, man. And um, it goes back to the point we're trying to make with uh, we, we have connections kind of all over the 
all over the place, you know, which is very, very cool. Yeah. Um, but um, back to Coach Lalo, he um, he kind of took me under his wing, obviously developing my own boxing skills because, um, granted, I I, uh, I plan on fighting, uh, obviously, with this um, whole epidemic going on. It did get pushed back. I actually had a fight date set up for April 10th. Wow. Um, oh, but was like literally right. Like, it would have been, what, next week? Next Saturday? Yeah, next week. Oh, yeah, exactly. God. Next next week. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I'm taking it day by day. Yep. But, um, yeah, he was the one that kind of took me under his wing to start teaching me more of the sport aspect of boxing and how to teach it, you know. Uh, he was the one that started teaching me about, you know, angles, uh, different styles, how each style can benefit, how each style has holes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so huge, huge shout out to Coach Lalo. He really helped me understand um, the sport aspect of it, man. Yeah. So we, so we got J. Mike, we got Coach uh, Coach uh, Lalo, and then who's the third mm-hmm. one? Uh, third one is Coach Lee um, out of Vital Force MMA in uh, Chino Hills. Okay. Um, he made me understand obviously with him it was more muay thai and mma training yes. but he helped me understand how different disciplines can actually help you develop your own style yeah. um so my boxing style has always uh before used to be more heavy on the lead foot you know um wider stance uh-huh. uh, more bladed stance um but ever since i started doing muay thai my stance and style kind of changed a little bit so now are you a little, are you a little a, bit more square now slightly yes so uh, i'm a slightly more squared i'm definitely more uh i'm more of a taller fighter Got it. and uh, i feel like that's helped me a lot in the sense of uh vision being able to see where my opponent's at at all times okay and then um, just balance, which in the heavyweight division, I mean, balance is a huge, huge key. Of course. You know? I mean, there's some big blows coming your way. So, uh, yeah, exactly. You take, we'll be able to withstand the punches. Yeah. So, uh, Coach Lee definitely helped me understand that and helped me understand how each discipline you learn, you could take something from it to develop your own style, you know? That's amazing, man. That is absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it just gets in context. Uh, how, uh, if you don't mind, how old are you, Coach? I am 27. Okay, cool, man. Young, bro. Mm-hmm. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> I mean, you got you got, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, you got so so many years ahead of you. Uh, you know, you're just developing. Uh, how, so, how many years have you been a coach in total? Uh, so I've been coaching under the strength name, going on my fourth year wow. now. Wow, that's cool. Man. Um, but before that, I had taken on a few uh people to train for absolutely free to kind of, of course, develop of my course. own. I remember um, those days, man. Yeah, yeah. To kind of like just get the experience, you know. Of so um I've been training under inner strength for four years, but I've been training independently um for a total of six. Wow. Okay, cool. Cool. And what yeah. uh, where were you training the first year? Man, um I've actually been training mainly out of my backyard God. for the oh. first three years, man. That's, that's Even when I started in the strength, uh, I uh I uh was training out of my backyard and it wasn't until the summer of twenty nineteen, around uh oh shit, almost about a year ago, when um Carlos, the owner of Alucha de Barbo God. Club, approached me with the idea of uppercut and I was like, All right, let's run it. Um I had always been looking into getting into a facility. But um, nothing ever, you know, lined up correctly. Um, I go off a of feeling quite a bit, man. And uh, with a lot of the people that I, uh, a lot of the people that I met, um, just there was excitement there because the facilities were nice. But something, just like something, didn't feel right, you know. No, I... So it's, it, you know, it, obviously different people. It was some different feelings. But finally, when Carlos, we had the, the sit down meeting, and we were putting out like numbers etc cetera, etc cetera. i'm like this feels right with me like in my heart in my stomach this this feels right you know so that's when we, we went ahead and um and um you know brought that idea to life i, I absolutely agree i mean you know I, I haven't moved around too much but um you know uh there was one facility I, I did work out of um in between going back to fortune um but just you know it wasn't it's not the equipment it's it's not it's not that it was just just you know the, the gut feeling just didn't feel right and if it doesn't feel yeah. right for me then uh you know it, it most likely doesn't feel right for other people as well too you know so yeah that'll that'll transfer over to your clients as of, well of course you know? i i absolutely mm-hmm. agree um now 
one of the main things that I wanted to uh, talk to you about is uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, debated battles on Instagram um, about network style. You know, mm-hmm. um, the Mayweather network has gotten so popular that, you know, like mm-hmm. that's what people think boxing is. And then there is more like the traditional what, um, you know, what some people call static mitt work or, you know, traditional mitt work, you know, popping one twos and, you know, slipping, you know, you know, maybe about maximum two to three punch counters. Like, what are your thoughts on what is on mitt work? Um, that's, this is a fun question. Um, I honestly believe that it's going to come down to the person that you're working with. Yes. Um, obviously, if you have an everyday uh, person who just wants to come in and get a good cardio session going, um, the main method of mid work is, is solid. You know, it's, it's fun. First of all, it's fun. It gets the heart rate going. It's great for cardio. Um, but if I'm trying to develop a fighter, I will most likely um, use a bit of both. I think they're both beneficial. Now, from a fighter perspective, the main, the main weather may work for me develops a couple of things, which I think are important. Obviously, the conditioning aspect of it. Yes. The reaction aspect of it. Okay. And mainly the more important one, which is why I like using it, is, is um, being able to listen to me, the coach, and make those connections, no matter how fatigued or no matter the chaos that's going on around Man, them. That which I a, think that transfers point. over. Yeah, because I believe that transfers over very uh, easily and very importantly into the fight. When you actually, you know, in the fight, you, you know, it's, it's loud, everything's going on, his, he's getting hit, the, the other opponent's getting hit, there's a lot of adrenaline going on, there's fatigue going on. So I think it's important to develop that skill of being him to be able to tune everything out and listen to your voice, search for your voice, you know? I, uh, I absolutely and, agree, man. Um, you know what? I used to, uh, there's a gym that's really close by to me. Um, I live in Koreatown, Los Angeles. Uh, there's mm-hmm. this place called Westside Boxing. Have you ever heard of them? No, first I hear um, they're, they're like a, uh, they're like a super neighborhood uh, boxing gym. I've known them for okay. about a decade now. Uh, you know, they've done, they have a good relationship with Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy promotion. So they've really become like this, um, you know, minor league farm gym that's been building a lot of great amateurs and into pros and whatnot. Nice. And um, uh, I used to go there for a little bit. And, um, you know, I always noticed that uh, one of the coaches, um, he would sit by the, by the entrance door, by the stairway and he would talk to his fighters in the ring. Mm-hmm. And I was like, um, I, I honestly thought that was kind of rude. I was like, hey, what are you, like, what are you doing, bro? Like, you know, like, I'm, I'm not like trying to teach him, but I'm like, wouldn't you rather want to be close to, you know, like by the ring where he, you know, they can hear you or whatnot. He goes, well, look, man, uh, you know, if you go to a real fight, man, and you know, there, there's, there's a big crowd, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of chaos going on. And, you know, I want to make sure that my fighter is going to be able to distinguish my voice from far away, yeah. you know, and because that's yeah. what it's going to feel like in the ring when you fight. Exactly. Exactly, man. That's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I think that's a very needed skill to build. Uh, at the same time, though, there are some cons to using the, the uh, Mayweather flow. Got it. So um, when- do you always start off with traditional and then you decide whether which way I'm going to go? Or do you, you know, do you kind of get them in the rhythm with the Mayweather flow and then go back to traditional? Um, it's, a mid- it's a mix of both, honestly. It's a mix of both, depending on their technique, on, uh, excuse me, depending on their skill level. Um, the first four to five sessions i mainly stick with uh with the basics Got you. you know with the basics get them moving a little bit mm-hmm. the more they progress the more flow they have within their combos then we're like hey let's try this out you Got know it. um but they have to make sure that they have the basics down the the fundamentals down to to my uh to my satisfaction okay you know? cool uh-huh um but yeah, man, like the, the cons of the of the Mayweather uh, are, uh, I think, mainly just like the unrealistic guy of it. There's no way we're going to, you know, anybody's ever going to throw like a bazillion punches and get exactly. hit. Exactly. Like exactly. So it the, the doesn't really transfer over to sparring or fighting too much. 
Um, and then obviously the other um, factors that go into it, you know, not being able to fully extend your hand, yes. um, not turning your punches over. So there, I think there is a place and time for both to develop a fighter or even somebody who's just looking to, uh, you know, an average person who's just looking to get better at boxing. I think they should uh, seek out both. Um, they're both fun and uh, they both have their own benefit to it. Got it. And so do you explain this to the people that you train? Um, to an extent, obviously, if it's just the average person coming in, I don't get too much into the explanation it. of it. Uh, but if it's a fighter, I'm telling him like, look, man, this is to test your conditioning. Um, I actually have a little bit of a, of a, of a test. I call it devil's day. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, and this is mainly, um, with my fighters. Got um, and I, I, I kind of, I, I run them through the gauntlet, you know, to kind of test their willpower, test, uh, where they're at, uh, mentally. Um, and then just see how much they're willing to push themselves, you know, and, um, a good chunk of that test is based on main, main, more than mid work, just being able to keep constantly, constantly keep going, Got you know? Um, but if it's just the average person, I use it more of like fun, like, Hey, let's try to go on broken for a minute. I let's try it. to okay. see, uh, how, you know what I mean? So, so you've gotten really good at being able to speak different languages to different types of clients. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. man. I think that's a, that's a very important skill to have as a trainer or a coach. You need to see what works for each different person and be kind of like a chameleon in that way, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, now, uh, kind of still going off the mitt work topic. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that want to learn how to hold pads. Mm -hmm. What is your best advice for a new beginner coach? Maybe they're a lifting coach or maybe, you know, maybe they've never coached anything at all, but they want to learn mm -hmm. how to hold mitts. How do you hold mitts when you have no clients? And you have no experience, but let's just say they've been boxing. Mm -hmm. So, so they have done boxing. Let's for, just say they have been bit. boxing. They they've been participating mm -hmm. in the sport. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, maybe they're you know they're already like a big box you know a lifting trainer or whatever they want to add it into their repertoire. Um, uh -huh. What is the best way that they can learn how to hold mitts? Because Obviously, there is like box and burn. Um, I really haven't. There, I think there's a few other like there's coach. You know, Coach Rick. Mitchell's oh yeah, I'm, I actually have a have a level one under him. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, he's he's fucking legit, dude. That's definitely more advanced, in my opinion. Now, definitely I mean, more advanced. I've taken Coach Rick's program too. I think he's definitely amazing. He does a great job in explaining the combos or whatever, but. Like, it's, it doesn't tell you, like, the ABCs of how to hold mitts. I mean, I know he kind of, like, touches on some things during his explanations, like, oh, don't smother mm -hmm. the pads or whatever. But yeah, it, that's just too basic for most people to understand. I, I agree. And uh, that's why I think he's advanced. Uh, because I had already been holding mitts for about nine months when I decided to take his program. Yep. And even then, I was like, hold up, what the fuck? Right, right, <laughs> you know? right, like, like, pull three, like, yeah. you know, uh, slide one, two, pull back. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah, 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 step and pivot. Yeah, and yeah, like, oh, no, like, dude, hell, people are not going to understand that. And they're trying to yeah. you know, run the drill, call the combos, you know what I mean? They're confused themselves, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly, man. Um, so, my, I, I guess there's a few tips, but my biggest one would be um, to try out boxing, learn the other side of it, you know, try to get as much mint work as you can with the other side of it, because I feel like what really helped me understand the mint work was being able to put myself on the other side, not necessarily just thinking about holding the mitts, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, you know, but mm -hmm. the funny thing was I, I've been, you know, hitting past for a long time and mm -hmm. I didn't quite, I wasn't you know, doing it with the intention of learning. But the funny mm -hmm. thing was I was, I think I carried a pair of pads with me for a very long time, even before I knew what to do with it, because I was just so fascinated by it. I actually like holding right. mitts better than holding hitting pads. I mean, I like them both, but I like holding pads yeah. better than I like hitting pads. Yeah, same, same here, same here. Um, and that's, I, I thought that sounded kind of weird, but I was like, no, it's, it's not weird. You know, some people no, sports like better than actually play the sport. Like, you know, it's just all different styles. Exactly, exactly. And then the other thing would be just to um, start off slow, you know. Um, the best way would be to visualize and like that person in front of you. Like if you don't, if you don't have anybody to hit pads with you, honestly, hit up a friend or, or somebody make an Instagram post and be like, hey, guys, I'm learning to hit pads. Um, anybody want to come train with me for free? 
that's exactly what I did when I started, man. I took Amen, on eight brother. people for Amen. That's yep. So I, I took on eight people absolutely free and I told them, Hey guys, I'm just learning this is to build up my skill level. I'm not gonna charge you. Come get this work if you want. And sure enough, man, I was able to fill up those eight slots and develop my experience that way. And how long um, did it take before you started to like internally have a level of comfort to be able to okay, cool, I think now I can start to get paid for this. Fuck, dude! I still, I'm still not confident, man. Uh-oh, I feel like man, that's I'm, crazy I'm still... that you say that, man. Because <laughs> nobody will be able you know? to tell me in your videos, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm still not confident, man. Like I, I'm still finding my my voice as a coach. I'm still finding my uh, my style as a mid holder, uh, and like I, I don't ever stop learning. I, I love this shit. This shit uh, is a uh, it's addicting, it, it bro. Consumes, it's addicting. Yeah, it, it consumes my life, you know. And every time I see like um, the mint holders that I look up to, Jairo Escobar oh, up in the Bay Area. I'm so, I'm so glad you brought that up. Give me your top five people that you love watching holding pads, man. I really wanted to ask you this. Oh, man. Yeah, so uh, definitely Jairo Escobar is up there. I would say he's number one. Okay. Um, he's he's a phenomenal mint holder, man. He's a monster. Um I know some people, uh, they, they get, uh, uh, I mean, it goes back to the whole uh, Mayweather style, but. Um, yeah, you know, let, let's, honestly, let's man. actually, let, let's stay, uh, let's not, let's not, disti- let's not discriminate between styles, just purely like just people that you love watching, regardless of. Okay. Um, I mean, RIP, man, Roger Mayweather. I always no, yeah, was man. fascinated in watching him there. I'm always fascinated watching him. Um, there's also another uh, local coach. Uh, he's out of Aztec Boxing Club, I believe. That's in East somewhere, LA. Uh, yeah, somewhere out in East yeah, LA. Yeah, I'm yeah. forgetting. I'm blanking out on the name on the name of the city. But uh, Coach Yuka, he's he's more of a Mexican style boxing coach. Okay, a lot of God, body man. shots, heavy. Yeah, body shot, head shots, yep. wide stance coming in, not not backing out Got of the it. pocket. Body, I body, fucking love watching the whole mix. Body head. Yeah, man. Power. Right. Yeah. Um, Exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> Coach Rick, obviously, he's he's a phenomenal, yes. phenomenal mid holder. I, I love how uh, he never really just posts uh, a video of him holding mitts for the sake of it. You know, he there's always some sort of lesson behind the the clips that he posts. Yeah, I just, you know? I mean, you know, obviously, I don't know how much money he makes or you know, like how well he does. I feel like he just doesn't get enough credit for the. For the for the level of work that he does, but that's just a little side note. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that for sure. Um, then another one of my favorites. He's out of Canada. Uh, Frank Frank Boxing Coach. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, man. For yeah, sure. yeah. He's he's super super awesome. Yeah, uh, you um, know, like he has a di- very different style. Um, it, for it's, sure. It's got like little 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 droplets of Mayweather mitt work, but it's very broken up, if that kind of makes sense. Yes, yes, it, it makes a lot of sense. And that's the reason why I like it, because I feel like his style of mitt work transfers over to his fighting very, very well. Right, so like, you know, like the Mayweather mitt work will go like, oh, you know, you know, catch left body hook upright and then catch the other side like right away. But like his is like a lot of the same movements, except it's broken up. Like he won't, he exactly. won't tell you what's coming in. So, okay, cool, like to have you move around and then go into the next combo. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, man. Um, one more? I have one more. Let me, let me try to think here. Let me try to think. Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give it to Coach Lalo, man. Oh. My coach. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. He's um, very fascinating on the mitts. He uh, does the same thing as me. We both believe that there's benefits to both styles of, of uh, the mitt work styles. Yes. And um, he finds a way to mix them both in to make it as fight realistic as possible. And that's right. something that I've definitely taken away from Dope. him. Definitely, definitely. Love it. Um, I, I want to share my five. Um, yeah, I yeah, I'm sure. To tell anybody. Um, uh, yes. Um, Haru Escobar is definitely up there. Uh, do you know who uh, uh, Jeremiah um, Maestra is? Yes, yes. Yeah. He's um, he's he's a, he's, uh, a, he's one of the Rumble guys. He trains with the Rumble guys from New York, right? Yes, yes. Okay, got it. Yep. And and in a <clears> long <throat> line with that, I, I love watching the Bruising Brothers hold mids too. I, I think they're phenomenal yeah. at what they do. Yeah. Um. Uh, I love watching. Uh, uh, 
man, why am I blanking out here? <laughs> uh, Kevin Gleason out of out of Florida. Oh, Gleason, yes, Gleason. Yes. He's a monster, bro. I, he's I love, legit. I love Kevin Gleason, um, and he's always so technical. Like I think he also does an amazing job in taking the traditional and Mayweather mid work and putting it together. And you know, it's just a stylistic thing. But yeah, I, I love yeah. the Tim Hole pads. Definitely. Um, uh, AJ Perez. AJ Perez, yeah, he's yep. he's awesome. Yeah, AJ Perez, and um, there's uh, I'm blanking my, I'm blanking out on my own. Oh, you know what? Um, I'm definitely gonna give it to one of my own coaches, um, uh, Jose Navarro. Um, he's one okay. of the trainers out of our gym. He was, I believe, he was the very first uh, fighter shot to sign the Golden Boy. He was a oh, wow, okay. WBC flyweight champion. Um, He's not made with a style, but he's got his own crazy style. Uh, super knowledgeable. Um, yep. I, I mean, I grew up on his pad work, so I, I love that. So, yeah. Cool. So, there's our five, guys. There is our five. Um, yep, yep. And the two more things I want to ask you. Number one is a business question. Number two, it's it's more kind of client-related. Um, okay. So, how do you know how much to charge and when to raise as a trainer? Um, I had I a hard like this time. Is something that haunts a lot of trainers. Yes, yeah, so I had a hard time um, finding that curve for me, just because it comes with confidence. I believe. Yes. Now, the hardest part about that was obviously finding my own confidence, but then at the same time, making sure that I'm worth what I'm going to be asking for. Yes. You know what I mean? So. Um, my base price started off pretty, pretty low to where I had a, a couple of clients um, saying that I, I need to raise my prices. Oh, so um, they were willing to pay you more. Yeah, yeah. They were like, you're, you're worth more than this, you know? And I think the biggest hiccup for me, well, I don't want to call it a hiccup, but the biggest factor that went into my uh, way of thinking at that point was because I was training out of my backyard, Got you know? I, no, I, I didn't I have, I you know, like I didn't have the, the gym. I didn't have the look. And, uh, um, you know, but, uh, thankfully people stuck with me and they were like, they saw my value, you know, and, uh, that definitely helped out in finding that. And then, uh, also something that made sense in, in, um, in the numbers, you know, something that made sense in the numbers where I'm not, you know, like gouging people for a bunch of money, but, you know, at the end of the day, man, this is how we make a living. This is how we put food on the table, you know? Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. So it was it was uh, about ha finding that happy medium. Now to give you some actual numbers, when I first started off, man, I was charging about fifteen bucks a session. Um, uh, one five. Yeah, one five, fifteen. Okay. Yeah, fifteen bucks a session, and that was about thirty to forty five minutes, you know. Okay. And then I started to notice. Um, granted, we're steering off a little bit off topic here, but I'm a huge believer in warming up. I actually have a dynamic warm up that I run all of my clients through every single time, and that takes about ten to fifteen minutes. Okay. So those uh, those half hour sessions, we weren't really getting too much done because uh, I'm a huge believer in the warm up. So that's when I started taking it up to the hour sessions, and now those hour sessions, my price only went up by like five bucks, so I was charging twenty bucks. Uh -huh. um, so at this uh, time in, in my career, we could say I was um, also had a side job, uh, which was a warehouse job. I was bouncing up and down a bunch of different warehouse jobs. Okay. Um, so I always I didn't have the the necessity to uh, make this like my uh, my sole uh, way of income, you know. Got it. So uh, when I decided to take that step, I realized like, OK, I need to put an actual business plan behind this. And uh, I started uh, consulting different trainers and gyms around the area, uh, which was a fun experience because I noticed not a lot of people are willing to just be like, oh, yeah, this is what I charge. You know, people are very vague about that. Which, yeah, you know what? That really bugs me, bro. That really bugs same, me, man. Same. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, I, I get it. Okay, I get so it. I, get I, it. I, mean, I mean, I need to know what, what I'm getting, what I'm paying. You, you know exactly. Because I mean? then I'm going to be like, I don't like, I don't know if I can afford you. Like, you know, right. I'm like, again, so I got to know. Yeah, exactly. So then um, that's where I started basing my, my price off of. And then obviously, once I moved into the gym, the prices did go up a little bit because now I had to worry about rent at the gym. Um but uh, everybody's been been pretty supportive of, of that. And then um, they've been uh, 
uh, understanding of any price increases that, that uh, price increases that have had to happen in the past. You know, Got um, you know what's one one kind of interesting thing though that I've noticed is um, usually people who are looking for training and they start asking questions and they base those questions more around the money yes rather than what we actually do don't tend to sign up but when people approach me and they start asking me more about what i do more about what they can do to get better they tend to stick with me more long term no matter the 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 money you know wow you know what that that's a great point man i actually never thought about it like that but uh, that that's a great point dude um yeah because you know like you know let's just simply put like if you go to a restaurant right and you want to eat there i don't start asking about how much the the price of, of what i want of the the ribs that i want to eat right i just go hey what kind of ribs do you serve right right, so, right. that's crazy i never thought about it like that yeah dude it, it was like I, honestly i hadn't thought about it the other way uh, like that way either but then uh um a few months ago i had some people reach out to me and i was like oh this this is interesting there's a little bit of a pattern here that usually people who are more based around the the, the, the money and yeah. uh, how much I charge, I usually get the one message back from them saying, oh, okay, I'll see what's up. And then I don't hear back from them rather yeah. than the people that I like, oh, so what do you do? Or like, look, I'm trying to box and like, I'm trying to get better. Uh, and I would give them some tips. And then obviously I would be like, and you know, if you're interested, you know, like I do training as well, so we could start on this. And it's usually like when the relationship starts off like that, um, that I tend to have them for longer term. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, my goal is to be able to, uh, to develop enough confidence in, in somebody, whether it be a fighter or whether it be a, uh, a just, you know, everyday person to not need me anymore, you know? Man, you know, that's so crazy to say that. And, you know, we'll, we'll make this the last topic here. Um, you know, to, to think about to run a business where I hope that they don't need me anymore one day is such a such a brain fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, you know, like I thought about that. I was like, one day, like, I guess, you know, really, like, I guess the ultimate trainer would, did I do enough to make sure that this person doesn't need me anymore? Like, mm -hmm. like that has haunted me for years, bro. But really that that that's the goal right if i really did my job would they really need me you yeah know? exactly exactly and that's i think that's what it comes down to really like if if you're with you you know if you have a client and uh, they've been coming for you from for two years now and they still have no idea how to structure their own workout they still have no idea uh what they can do to gain hand speed they still have no idea what they can do to get a better hook then you might not be delivering <laughs> the services of coach as well as you thought you were, you know? Got it. Got it. Um, cool. Um, and uh, one very last thing, um, yeah. you know, I do this to share content, but also because I, I want to learn from other coaches too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't know how deeply you follow my content, uh, high or low. It's, it's not important. Yeah. Um, I just want to get, uh, is there from what you've seen of me on Instagram, like, do you think, uh, what's one thing that you see that I could be doing better at? Oh, that's a good question. I would like to ask you that question back. Um, but honestly, um, I, I love your content, man. Uh, it, it catches the attention. Um, obviously you, you have the whole look, um, man, one thing you could be doing better. Um, you know what, man? And I'm not just saying this to be nice, but I, I, I think you're, you're doing great. I don't, I don't really, I don't really see <laughs> like you. you have, yeah, I don't really see like you, you have some, I mean, we could always improve on, on, on things, yeah. you know? I mean, I was kind of hesitant to ask this question because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to seem like a little jackass. I wanted to like, oh, like, I just want to hear like, I'm doing so well, right? Like, I mean, just because I, I know, like, I'm not perfect. Like, none of us are perfect. I know right, there's exactly. so many ways to improve. Um, so let's just say this. Like, if you ever see anything or if you are reminded of anything while you're coming across my content in the future, if you let me know, that would, you know, I think that would be super cool. Um, I think, uh, you know, just on an improvement level, just because you're now like a, you know, you're more uh, – training towards fighters or whatever i i would love to learn from you in the aspect where i don't know maybe like 
you know, if you had a fighter in their headgear, like, oh, like, this would be an actual sparring situation versus a combo, you know? Mm, like, I think I that'd be really cool. Yeah. Because um, I, I think you do some really amazing combos that I've never thought of. Mm. But if if we were to be able to see that in a sparring situation, I mean, not exactly like, you know, have people hit each other, but, like, if we were sparring here and then we would be doing this versus, oh, here's the combo, that kind of makes sense. Mm, just because I'm see. learning, trying to learn sparring too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think just because you have knowledge, it'd be kind of cool if we, if we saw that from you. Yeah, man, definitely. I'll definitely keep that in mind. And uh, I had been trying to do that the last few few posts. And cool. um, whether it be, you know, my own sparring videos, sparring videos of my clients, or even some sparring videos or fight videos of um, the, the, yeah. the greats, you know, the pros. Like, I'm not sure if you saw one of my latest ones was uh, I broke down a combo from uh, the Tyson Fury uh, Wilder fight. Oh, no, I didn't see that. I'm on, yeah. on Instagram? Yeah, it's on, it's on Instagram. It's my second combo looking, uh, oh. working, working, uh, working your way down. And uh, yeah, man, it was, he executed it very beautifully. And I, um, same thing that you said, I got a lot of good feedback from that saying, oh, I like yeah, how I was able to see the, cool, the sparring. Yeah, like they, they like being able to see the, the, the technique in action, you know? Yeah, um, actually, you know, speaking of that, uh, you know, I think who does that incredibly well is Mustafa Boxing. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, that guy is, that guy's a legend, bro. Man, he's 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 on next level, man. Uh, yeah, man. Look up to him and very I didn't much. even know. I, I don't think he ever fought. I think he made a video about that one time too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I yeah. thought was super cool. It goes back to the um, point we were just touching on. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, with that being said, um, you know, uh, I really want to thank you for coming on today, just because I know you're busy and, uh, um, you know, it was it was amazing to hear your story, to learn from you, um, kind of get your origin story. Uh, is there like one? quote or a phrase that you live by that you know would leave people a little bit of a uh, positive word uh, yeah man definitely uh first off i just want to say thank you for having me man. Of course, I, man. I appreciate the time i appreciate the, the the fact that you uh um you know you seek me out for this it, it does mean a lot like i said i i'm still trying to find my voice as a coach and as a as, as a we trainer. all are, yeah so uh having this sort of support is definitely uh helpful for me so I appreciate that a lot, brother. And um, honestly, man, uh, words of wisdom here would be to always strive to find that inner strength, man. Um, that's one of my slogans from from my uh, brand. And uh, you know, always, uh, always strive, strength. always Got strive you. to find your inner strength. Got yeah, it. man. We we you know, times are getting tough, especially right now, and we just gotta persevere and move forward, man. Things will get better, but before they get better, they gotta get a little ugly. <laughs> love it brother you know? love it well thank you very much man um i will definitely let you know when this is all updated and edited and ready to go brother cool sounds good man appreciate you all right man have a great day yeah, brother. you too brother Thanks, Take it easy. stay safe bye, -bye.